So with all of this, if, if you've got a child who's saying, okay, I, I'm listening to Joy. I'm going to take stock of my own situation. And they go, you know, I, I, can't, I can't do what I need to do if I'm spending all my money on caring for mom. So that can lead to feelings of guilt mm -hmm. and, you know, all kinds of emotions. How, how do these kids who are 65 maybe, how do they reconcile themselves on that? So money isn't the only reason we feel guilty. Sometimes we do things and we wish we hadn't done things. Mm. We say things. We are not there all the time when we'd want to be. Guilt is the family caregiver's constant companion. It just doesn't go away. So what we have to do is get really good at managing guilt. Mm -hmm. After all, we're human. And we have to say, am I doing the best that I can right now? And if the answer is yes, then just take good care of yourself and realize that. If the answer is no, make a phone call. See if there's something else you could do. What is realistic? But the best thing is, is to be kind to yourself. Family caregivers are so tough on themselves. Mm -hmm. And it just isn't right. Look at who you are and what you're doing for your loved ones. You're amazing. That's wonderful. Well, I know it's the title of one of your books, but I'd like to ask it as a question anyway. Who will take care of me when I'm old? The answer is you, David. You will take care of you when you're old by planning ahead, by knowing what you need to be looking for, by talking about things that family are so afraid to talk yeah, they about. They talk about it. And you have to just say, I'm going to take care of myself when I'm old by planning ahead and talking right now. And don't be afraid of it. I love that because it's wonderful to have kids and spouses but especially the kids tuned in to the parents and wanting to make sure their care is going to be taken care of that's wonderful but it really starts with the person themselves and it's not a week that goes by that i'm not having a conversation about this from a financial planning standpoint mm -hmm. joy and people are going yes this is something that we need to talk about and i'm glad we're talking about how to invest my money but yeah who should be my power of attorney who should take care of my health care decisions and they're engaging more and more so I, I think that that conversation's got to be had and people need to be thinking about it for themselves. And the way that we have to also include is our friends. And keeping in mind, many of us don't have children behind us. We have to figure who's going to be our social and medical and housing network. Sure. We need our friends and we need to be good to them and we need to learn how to be good friends. Well, and if you have those friends, that can help you stay connected and not get isolated. Oh, we have to. That's the biggest thing. The old people I know who are isolated, it's terribly, terribly, uh, it actually, it's a health risk. Yeah, because if nobody's in, interacting with them, how do you know? Right. So, and, and, the, and, and depression and all of those mm -hmm. other things that come into play. Isolation and loneliness is a big problem that we have to help solve. But we can do that right now. We have to learn how to be better friends and how to get people engaged with each other. I do have a tip, and that is eating together is something all of us can do, rich right. and poor. Just ask somebody, invite somebody to dinner. My book started a movement. It's called Let's Eat Together, and I give a lot of tips on how to do that. Well, it's then we'll, so we'll encourage them to do that, Joy. They need to eat together and be aware of what to do. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com.